from the Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina, this is Atlantic Coast Conference basketball with one and three Georgia Tech against North Carolina, five and zero oh, and number one in the ACC. The Yellow Jackets' chances may hinge on freshman guard Mark Price, the third leading scorer in the conference. Price has a high game of 26 points this year as a freshman, but Tech's offense may need more than that this afternoon because 6'9 freshman forward John Sally is not with the club. Sally, the team's second leading scorer and leading rebounder, injured a knee in his last game and did not make the trip to Greensboro. North Carolina may be the hottest team in the country, number one in the ACC, winners of 13 straight, including a heart stopper over Wake Forest Thursday night. When Danny Young had the shot rejected by Brad Doherty, Matt Doherty was fouled at the other end, and he made both free throws to give Carolina a two-point lead. And when Danny Young's desperation shot came up short, North Carolina had escaped by two. Bobby Crimmins will try to pull something out of the hat today, missing one of his stars, but what a tough day to do it against Dean Smith, who has all the weapons. Back who flew up here from Atlanta last night, Mark Price, the superb freshman from Eden, Oklahoma, averaging almost 19 points a game. Anthony Bird will start today in the backcourt, a 6'2 junior from Apex, North Carolina. The biggest man they have on the squad, Tim Harvey, a 6'10", 240-pound freshman at center. Up front, George Thomas, a senior, 6'3", from Cocoa, Florida, normally a guard. He'll play forward today. And his frontline mate, Danny Pearson, another freshman, 6'5", 205, from Columbia, South Carolina. For North Carolina, the starting lineup, the one that has carried them through this 13-game winning streak. In the backcourt, Jim Braddock, the playmaker, 6'2", a senior from Chattanooga. Michael Jordan, sure to be All-American, 6'6", a sophomore, 196 pounds. In the middle, Brad Doherty, 6'11", a freshman from Black Mountain, North Carolina. The forwards, Matt Doherty, a junior, 6'8", 215 pounds. And Sam Perkins, 6'9", 234, the All-American junior from Latham, New York. There are your officials today, Lenny Wirtz, Jim Reif, and James Herring. And we're set to go. Jeff, North Carolina in white with a light blue trim, Georgia Tech in the dark uniforms, and Tim Harvey goes in to jump it against Brad Doherty. And North Carolina will control the opening tip. That's Matt Doherty inside to Perkins, just inside the three-point line. And Georgia Tech opens it in a very aggressive man-to-man. -man. That's Brad Doherty. Missed the first shot. Matt Doherty with a rebound. He'll put up his follow, but we have a whistle. And the first foul of the ball game. Looks like it's going to be on Anthony Bird, who really has... Uh, down low at 6-2 was one of those height mismatches we talked about earlier, Joe. Yes, and Matt Doherty did a good job of getting inside position. The official called a foul before the shot. North Carolina will take the ball out underneath their basket. Scoreless through the first 20 seconds here in Greensboro. Georgia Tech in drop back 2-3 zone. High lob for Perkins. The alley-oop from Braddock inside, and Sam Perkins has his first two points of the ball game. 2-0, North Carolina. That almost looked like an out-of-bounds play, perhaps in the films. Dean Smith noticed Georgia Tech's 2-3 zone doesn't get back, and that time Sam Perkins got behind it for the high line. Anthony Bird with the basketball. Comes back outside to Price. This young man is a great outside shooter. Notice that Michael jo Jordan is guarding Mike Mark Price. Dean Smith not wanting to give him a good look at the basket from the outside where he's so effective. First miss of the day by Pearson. Here comes Braddock on the run. Gets it low to Perkins, and patented little turnaround jumper, and Sam Perkins has all four of Carolina's points for a 4-0 lead. The inside strength of Carolina we mentioned in the open, Mike, and certainly Dean Smith knows that's where he has his advantage. He's gone to it twice. George Thomas gets it low to Pearson. Back to Price, three-pointer, airborne, and he got it. Mark Price averaging 18 and a half points a game. He hits only 37% of those free throw attempts. But what that translates to, because it's a three-pointer, is more than 50% shooting. As far as offensive effectiveness, and we may have seen the type of offenses today, two inside baskets for North Carolina. Mark Price hitting from the outside for Georgia Tech. Matt Doherty just outside that circle. Low to Brad Doherty. He'll turn around from the baseline. Perkins with a follow shot. Had it knocked out of his hands. 
and then Jordan scored and was decked as he did. Michael Jordan, who has just really been on a tear lately. Michael Jordan, we mentioned it time and again, has a license, even when he plays guard, to go to the offensive boards every time. Very unusual in most team plans, but Dean Smith knows how good an offensive rebounder he is. Here's the drive by George Thomas, and he'll draw the foul. And the first substitute of the ball game for Georgia Tech will send Maurice Bradford into the ball game. Here we see a nice drive inside the lane. Going to pass it at the last second. He was fouled before the pass. Bradford is in for Bird. And this is Bradford. Pearson, his jumper hits just inside the three-point line. And Tech is not going to be shy about it today. They're down by one. And we've seen Danny Pearson, the Georgia Tech freshman, play a couple of times, Mike. I'm very impressed with his cool, his presence, and his ability to be a fine player in the ACC. Braddock. And they'll try to work the ball inside anytime they can because they have that big height advantage except for the center position. Braddock. Carolina a little cold at the start of the ball game. Bradford gets it out to Price, and Price palmed the ball as he tried to make a move to the baseline. I think he was surprised to find once not having Michael Jordan <laughs> shadowing him. He just couldn't get a handle on the basketball that time. 6-5 Carolina, 17 minutes to go, first half. Tech is now back into a zone. They get it low to Perkins again, and Price reached in and got him on the wrist, I believe. There's Dean Smith, who has guided this club, as Jeff said, through a 3-3 three and three start, and ever since then, I think they've been playing the best basketball in the country. I think they have, no question about it. And we're seeing a little of the Dean Smith strategy here early in the game. Wherever there is a weakness, he'll try and exploit it. No question that time when Sam Perkins got the basketball in the lane area, he was going to the hoop. Perkins, a marvelous free throw shooter, over, over 85%, but he misses his first. Sam has four of the six Carolina points here in the early going. Not bad from the three-point line either. He's hitting That's almost 69% right. of his three-point shots this season. Including a giant shot against Wake Forest. Got the roll on that one, and Carolina leads by two, seven to five, and here is the pressure. Georgia Tech does not have a deep bench, and you have to know Dean Smith is going to try to run them a little bit and wear them down. George Thomas handling the ball to Price. Carolina drops back into, now well, they're still in their man-to-man. -man. They'll try to get the ball to Price as often as they can, and he has it out of the far corner. Really forced that shot over Jordan. Michael Jordan, 6'6", a hand in his face. Made him rush the shot a little bit. Matt Darty. Low to Perkins, missed the shot, and Tech comes out with the basketball and a chance to tie. Here's Price. Thomas. Can't get it. Jordan with a big rebound. Michael Jordan ahead to Doherty. Perkins from long range. As Jeff told you, he can shoot from out there. And that's an excellent fast break. That time Perkins was the trailer. Doherty brought the ball up, pulled up, looked back for the trailer. Sam Perkins open at the free throw line. Very similar to the basket they got against Wake Forest last week, only that was a three-point basket by Perkins. Seven points for Perkins. There is Bradford driving with a great block, but there is the follow shot by Tim Harvey, and he even drew the foul from Perkins. Oh, Jordan just comes out of nowhere to block shot. Michael Jordan. Perkins, Doherty, Martin, and Jordan have 80 blocks for the season. Michael Jordan just got his 13th for the year. But his are very dramatic. Coming from the weak side, going up with the left hand. Excellent block. Ball comes back to Harvey. He's got a chance for the three-point pass play. Warren Martin has checked into Carolina's lineup. He'll be in the pivot, and the free throw is good, so Harvey completes the three-point play, and Georgia Tech gets within a point. 15.44 to go in the first half. The timeout with the score, Carolina 9, Georgia Tech 7. We'll be back after this word. Four on the board here. It's Carolina 9-8, to eight. and watch the ability of Michael Jordan. This is what we call weak side defense, and no one does it better than Michael Jordan. We saw him against Maryland early this year. The last shot of the game, he made a similar block, coming all the way from the weak side to the ball to make a great play. 
outside of a technicality, it's almost a crime to uh, mention Michael Jordan's name and anything uh, concerning weak in the same sentence. <laughs> there is not a weakness in his game for certain. That's Warren Martin, 54. Ian Perkins is a big man in Carolina's lineup right now. And Jordan gets it inside. Back out to Doherty. His jumper a little long. Carolina a little cold from the field, and Georgia Tech will have a chance to take the lead right now. The Yellow Jackets trail by one. Price trying to beat Jordan. Price with one three-point shot so far. That's Martin, or against Martin, Tim Harvey. And he'll score inside. He has five points. And Georgia Tech has a 10 to 5 lead. 10 to 9 lead, rather. That was just a good one-on-one -on -one move by Tim Harvey in the lane area. He knows he'll have to help his team tonight with John Sally out. There's Jordan. Had the shot partially blocked. Got his own rebound. He'll try it again. Had it blocked again. And this time he is fouled. And the foul is going to go against Maurice Bradford. But I wanted to tell you that uh, Coach Bobby Crimmin said last night that Harvey is playing a lot better. Here we see going baseline Jordan. Great effort by Danny Pearson that time. But here's Jordan fighting among the forwards for Georgia Tech, who he's taller than all of them, by the way, making a great second and third effort to get fouled. Checking into the ballgame, Steve Hale for North Carolina, number 25. He's a freshman from Jenks, Oklahoma. He was the tri-player of the year in one uh, vote with Mark Price, the outstanding freshman for Georgia Tech, both from Oklahoma. 10-9, Tech over Carolina by one, and Jordan will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. He's only a 66% shooter. Jordan uh, has scored two points so far this afternoon. Everyone knows what a great athlete he is and what a fine basketball player, but there we see the heart in Michael Jordan. Had his shot deflected by a great play. He stayed after it until he made something happen, and that's what makes him a super great player. Jordan ties it at 10, 14.44 to go. First half from Greensboro. North Carolina against Georgia Tech. The high arcing shot goes through again, and it's 11-10. Carolina back on top. This is George Thomas trying to beat the pressure. Gets it to Pearson. He is double teamed by the trap. Thomas had Price open and now gets him the basketball. Good ball moving inside for Tech into the corner. Now it's tipped out of bounds. Seven seconds left on the shot clock as they took a long time getting into their offense right there. And you see Tech has done what they've had to do so far. Shot four of seven from the floor. I don't think anybody on the Tech team knows how much time Two seconds. Left. One. And they didn't beat it. They did not beat the 30-second clock. And that was a freshman mistake, Jeff, because they took the ball out of bounds with seven seconds to go and burned all seven. Someone either on the floor or from the bench should have alerted the team that, hey, you only got seven seconds. And Pearson was open momentarily yes, for a three-point shot from the corner. Carolina with the ball and the lead. Hale got the ball inside to Buzz Peterson, who has also checked into the ball game. Dean Smith can be very liberal with his substitutions with a much deeper bench than Georgia Tech. Hale, low to Martin. Cross court to Peterson and now Doherty. And Doherty will get one up. Rim the basket won't go. And Martin may have thrown an elbow inside to get position. The foul is going to be on Warren Martin. He was called for pushing. He had good position down low. Here's a nice move by Doherty. Going into that 15-foot range. The ball comes off Martin. You can see the shoulder. Little push. 13 minutes, 47 seconds on a turning clock, and it's Carolina by one, 11 to 10 over Georgia Tech. Price, who has had very little room to operate so far. Carolina defense, of course, will concentrate on him. They get the ball to Harvey, put it on the floor, and then scored over Warren Martin. That's two times in a row we've seen Tim Harvey take the ball straight towards the basket. Nice move inside. And he has seven of Georgia Tech's 12 points. And the Yellow Jackets and Bobby Crimmins lead by one again. Peterson to Hale. I post to Martin. Peterson, short on his shot, has his own follow. Oh, nice play. Buzz Peterson, the sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina, got his own follow. Takes a good athlete to do that. He caught the ball in the air, never came down, laid it very softly off the glass. Bradford with a great pass, and there is Harvey with a follow shot, and Tim Harvey has nine points. Excellent basketball that time by Georgia Tech. Penetrating to the basket, two fine passes, and finally a rebound effort by Tim Harvey. Jack back on top by a point, Matt Doherty. To Peterson and back to Doherty. He's being guarded by Price. There's a height mismatch there of almost eight inches. Martin to Peterson to Hale. 
Hale tries to penetrate, and a column for traveling. North Carolina, Jeff, does not look particularly sharp right now. Well, they haven't hit their outside shots yet. They're trying to take the ball inside. If they can loosen the Tech defense up a little bit by hitting a few outside shots, that would help. Georgia Tech, on the other hand, is playing strong defense, sagging in, but they're coming out strong on the North Carolina shooters after the ball is swung. George Thomas to Pearson. They get it out to Anthony Byrd, working the ball around. Pearson goes down the lane and threw it away, intercepted by Hale, tries a behind-the-back dribble. Hale gets it in low and triple-team to Sam Perkins. And there's a foul. We had a good look that time at the sagging defense. The ball goes into Martin. Three Georgia Tech players all around him. Look at this. And we'll see Anthony Bird reach in. But three players within a couple feet. What a game Tim Harvey has had so far. Four for four from the floor. Two rebounds. One out of one from the free throw line. A total of nine points. And there's the alley-oop to Jordan. Nice pass from Hale. No question about it, they picked that up off the game films because again, out of bounds, underneath the basket, they snuck Michael Jordan that time behind the 2-3 zone. Jordan has six. Thomas to Bird, and Bird will knock it down from the right side. Anthony Bird. George Thomas giving the Georgia Tech offense a big lift by penetrating into the Carolina defense and then making a good pass. Get it low to Martin. He's double teamed, wheels into the lane, and has the ball taken away. And now I think he's going to be called for foul as he tried to get it back. Two quick fouls on Warren Martin. Warren Martin a little disgusted with himself. Again, he got the ball inside. Three players around him. That's the time to sling the ball to the open man. With 11 minutes and 31 seconds to go in the first half, there's a timeout on the floor with the score. Georgia Tech 16, North Carolina once already in this ballgame, resulting in a Georgia Tech turnover. If it becomes a factor in this ballgame, you will see it in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, and maybe uh, it'll help you keep that a little bit more in perspective and what it might mean this year in the ACC. 11-31 to go, and there's the field goal percentage. We said, Jeff, early that Tech had had to shoot well, and boy, are they ever. Yes, they are. They're running their offense actually a little better than North Carolina right now. I think what it'll take is a few outside shots to drop, maybe a couple steals, easy baskets for North Carolina to get their offense on track. So far, Georgia Tech's done a good job of protecting the basketball. 16-15, Georgia Tech by one. This is George Thomas, the senior. Coco, Florida, trying to penetrate against Hale. He'll put up a shot from the lane, and he knocks it down. First two points for George Thomas. He has been so effective many other ways today. And it's 18-15 Tech. Jordan, three-pointer. Michael Jordan decided that if nobody else can do it outside, I'll do it. Inside, outside, it makes very little difference to the All-American sophomore. He has nine, and we're tied at 18. Price has been rather quiet. They've done a big defensive job on him. Anthony Bird tried to get inside. Now to Price, but he's 40 feet away with, from the basket. Dribbles between his legs, trying to get some place to go and get off a shot. Thomas, he'll lean into one and pass it instead. The shot clock is down to two, but they'll call him for traveling. Good defense that time by Carolina. They kept the Georgia Tech offense outside away from the basket. There's Bobby Crimmins not happy with the call or not happy with the fact that his team burned another 28 seconds off the shot clock and did not get a shot that time, so that's twice. You think he doesn't know, too, that if his team's got a chance today, he's got to give them all the support he can from the bench? You bet. 18 all, nearing the midway point of the first half. Mike Patrick along with Jeff Mullins. What has been a very good ball game so far. Jordan, another three-pointer. Got it. 12 points for Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan is now playing a different position in the Carolina offense. He's now at the forward position, and he's getting that wing opportunity shot that he likes so much. Bird is fouled by Doherty before he got a chance to shoot that ball. There's, there's Doherty, a non-shooting foul. So Tech will inbound the basketball. Dean Smith has really used his bench early in the ballgame, Jeff. Yes, he has. He's trying to keep a lot of pressure on defensively. And when you do that, it's tiring. You need to use your bench. Price works through a double team all the way down the lane. Nice move by Mark Price, who is really, I think, a little quicker than he initially looks to everyone. He is very quick, not necessarily extremely fast. But for basketball, quickness is very important. 
Braddock is also back in the ballgame, and there's Perkins in the lane. Missed the shot. Here's the whistle. We've got a foul. On who? I think Tim Harvey was called for slapping. Here's Perkins with a nice shot in the lane, a little short. You'll see Harvey go up and hit Doherty's hand. He's called for the foul. It's 21-20. Carolina by a point with 9.43 to go. And the Tar Heels have the basketball. You see John Brownlee, a 6'10 sophomore, coming into the ballgame. He's out of Fort Worth. He's played a lot more lately. And you see that uh, the teams are just about even, or exactly even, as a matter of fact, in the team foul department. Neither club in the bonus. That comes when you reach seven. Braddock, the alley -oop to Jordan. Good defensive job inside by Maurice Bradford. All he could hope for was to break it up, and he did. Three times in a row, we've seen exactly the same play. The ball comes out to Braddock. Jordan gets behind the 2-3 zone. He was going down with a terror that time, but he was fouled before. Sixth team foul against Tech. And Jordan will go back to the free throw line. That shows the advantage, Mike, of pre-scouting. They obviously pick that up in a game film, something that Georgia Tech does on out-of-bounds defense, and they've made it work three times in a row. Jordan, two out of two from the line today. He's got 12 points. Had a pair of three-pointers. And Michael Jordan, we should get a look at Dean Smith, but uh, against Wake Forest in this same building Thursday night, had a little trouble at the free throw line. Very unusual. Having no trouble so far today, he is four for four. Carolina has a 23-20 lead. Jordan in with 14 points. I think he's had their last eight points, if I'm not mistaken. Two three-pointers, two free throws. Thomas double teamed by the pressure. Good cross-court pass on the layup by Anthony Bird, who beat Jordan to the bucket. Four points for Bird. It's 23-22. Georgia Tech on offense seems to be playing with a lot of discipline and a lot of confidence. Well, they're taking their time, and the pressure hasn't bothered them yet. Of course, the key to defensive pressure is it eventually wears a team down. Let's see how Georgia Tech continues to do. And they'll get the ball in low to Doherty, and we have a foul as Tech right now is playing with no one on the court uh, taller than 6'4", as Harvey went out for a rest, and now Bobby Crimmins is going to get Harvey back in the ballgame. And when you only have uh, a players that are 6'4", or shorter on the court, you've got a lot of work to do. You've got a lot of work to do, and yet in Bobby Crimmins' shoes, he has to get Harvey a blow now and then. The game is too, too fast-paced and too intense not to get a little bit of a rest. 23-22, Carolina by one with 9.07 to go. And there's Brad Doherty, a good look at the young man. His free throw is no good, and Tech has the basketball and a chance to regain the lead. Price will give the ball up to Thomas, and they're going to let Thomas control the ball as much as possible today so they can get Price free to take whatever shots he can. So far, he has not had many. Bradford, nice pass inside, and then he tried to get it to Harvey. Great idea, but Harvey was racing toward the bucket to uh, get any rebound that might come up and wasn't ready for it. Good vision by Thomas that time. He got in. He knew he had defensive pressure coming, tried to hit Harvey. Pass might have been a little hard, a little too firm to handle. Sam Perkins will be the trigger man, and he gets it into Braddock. Braddock is just a brilliant three-point shooter. He hasn't taken any, made any yet today. Carolina's committed over only two turnovers so far this half. They get it to Jordan low. Can't get the shot. Here's the whistle. And I think this is going to be on Doherty, and it is. Coming over the back. Michael Jordan, no question about it, wants the basketball. Here he is inside for position. Good defense by Georgia Tech. The ball a little short. Doherty coming over the back. Tech down by one with 831 to go against full court pressure. They get it to Bradford. They've got a three on two right side to Price. And Price is nailed as he went to the bucket. Who gets the foul? Is it Doherty or Jordan? Mark Price may be only six feet tall, but he took that ball straight to the basket. Firm, strong. He's fouled on the way up. He'll get two shots. He's looked at mainly as an uh, outside shooter. He has one three-pointer and one driving layup today, and now he'll go to the free throw line. He's got five points. Brad Doherty in a little bit of foul trouble will have to come out of there. And we get Warren Martin back in the game. Mark Price is an 87% free throw shooter, leading the conference right now from the free throw line. First one is good. Never, never even bothers to touch the rim. Oklahoma Player of the Year last season in high school. 
And then in another poll, he shared it with Steve Hale and another young man you might have heard about, Wayman Tisdale. That's pretty good company, isn't it? Three front, fine freshmen this year showing that they deserve the honor. Georgia Tech with a one-point lead over Carolina, 24-23. Braddock looking for Dory, and then Perkins low and can't get to the ball. And Tech is playing some pretty tough defense. Perkins baseline turnaround. Sam Perkins with his ninth point of the ball game. Corey Spratford did everything he could that time. Good position. He had a hand up. He just couldn't bother Sam Perkins on that short jumper. Bradford on the offensive end. Carolina going with a pressure man to man. This is Thomas. Clear the right side for George Thomas. Shot clock is down to 10. Down to eight, and they get the ball inside, and Harvey will draw the foul, I think, from Warren Martin, and they are really doing a job at getting the shots they have to get. And when they get that ball down low to Tim Harvey, as we see this time, here it is. He's got a step, a shoulder. He goes up strong. Martin didn't have any choice but to foul him. Warren Martin with his second personal foul. There you see it again. And boy, Harvey has really improved since we saw him very early in the season. Yes, he is. There's no question about that. When he gets that ball inside, he's going up much stronger. He seems to have more confidence. He's handling the ball much better than he did early in the season. Free throw is good by Harvey. He's just having a wonderful ball game, and Tech has tied it again at 25. Harvey is in with 10 points for Carolina. Perkins has 9 and Jordan 14. So it's really been a three-man ball game so far. And now Georgia Tech with seven minutes and 38 seconds to go in the first half. Tech is retaking the lead. 26-25 over the seat on the bench with three personals. Brad Doherty also has three personals. What's the effect of your first two centers being in foul trouble this early in the half? Normally it's critical, but Dean Smith has a luxury of saying, well, I'll just move Sam Perkins back to his natural position, center. So now we have Sam Perkins, Buzz Peterson, Michael Jordan on the front line for North Carolina. This series stands at 19 and two, and the last time Tech won was during the 69-70 season. It has been a long dry spell, but right now they lead the Tar Heels 26-25. Georgia Tech, a new defense, a 1-3-1 zone instead of the 2-3. Carolina trying to move the ball around it. Perkins from long range won't get this one. And Georgia Tech has the basketball. Bradford is knocked down in the backcourt. The contact with Jordan, no foul. That was a no foul situation. Lenny Wirtz was right there. Both players just touched each other. Good, good no call by the official. Now Mark Price goes to the baseline. And they're always looking for him. Dangerous pass. Shot clock down to six seconds. Down to five. Two seconds, turn around, air ball, and they will not get a shot off, and the shot clock is gone. Bradford knew there wasn't much time on the clock, rushed it a little bit. Bobby Kremens, a little upset with his team. George Thomas made a great effort on the rebound that time, just couldn't keep a handle on it. Six minutes, 39 seconds left. Carolina with a basketball, trailing by one point. Peterson. Here's the whistle away from the ball. And I think Michael Jordan is going to be called for a pick. And he is. Georgia Tech playing with tremendous emotion right now. North Carolina with a smaller lineup is doing a lot more movement. There's Michael Jordan. You saw him move his shoulder in just a little bit, but he was called very alertly by the official for the moving pick. Mark Price will go for, to the free throw line. So Price goes to the line. It's the one and one. Price has uh, seven points. And misses a free throw. One of the best free throw shooters in all of college basketball. And he missed that one. Carolina with a chance to regain the lead right now. Braddock, he loves that long one, but he can't get it. Carolina not shooting well at all. This is Price. Checks the scene and directs traffic, and now Price wants to handle the ball outside. He has the last two times down the court. That's Bradford. Looking to give Bradford that outside shot. He sets the pick, and Price will dump it off. Price will get the long rebound. And there you see the shot clock. And once the ball came back outside, it reset at 30. That was an example of, again, when we see the outside shot, you have a tendency to get a lot more long rebound. Great defensive pressure by North Carolina. And a real great effort. 
effort that time by North Carolina for Jim Braddock to go down after that basketball because Georgia Tech was going to be called for throwing the ball back over the 10 second line. They were willing to let it go, but Braddock wanted the ball. Not the kind of play that Bobby Crimmins likes to see. He was a hustling, scrapping basketball player, and that time, Jimmy Braddock just outraced his Georgia Tech player to the basketball. Very alert play by Braddock. And Braddock will draw the foul and get a chance to go to the free throw line. Talk about good free throw shooters. He's hitting almost 82% this year. You know, Mike, there's an example of one of the toughest things in basketball. I've always felt like the offensive player can run a little bit faster when he's running for the ball than the defensive player. And the challenge in coaching is to get that defensive player to want to get to the ball just as hard as the offensive player does. That last foul was on Pearson. That's his third, and he has to sit down. And here's another whistle away from the ball. And this foul, I believe, is going to go against Georgia Tech. That'll be on Bradford. Very and similar. that will be his third. Very similar to the type foul we saw against Michael Jordan a minute ago. Moving pick. And here you've got Jack Mansell, who checks into the ball game for the first time. 6'7", freshman from Sharon, Pennsylvania. He does not play very much. And there you see the story. 26-25. Tech by a point over what may be the number one rated team in the country when the polls come out at the start of next week. Free throw by Perkins, and he missed another one. It's tipped out of bounds, but it'll be out to North Carolina. Jeff, we have seen Perkins, who's a great free throw shooter, miss a couple. Braddock, who's a great free throw shooter, miss one. Carolina's just not getting it done right now. Right now, the ball won't seem to drop for him. Mansell, fresh in the game, had the rebound fall in his hand, couldn't keep control of it, Carolina basketball. And Dean Smith will send Jordan back into the ball game. Now he'll take Peterson out. At the outset, I started to mention, Mike, one of the advantages to a coach like Dean Smith, if your team has a tendency to be flat, not all 10 players are going to be flat. He's using who now has 11. They beat the timeline, and you can hear the crowd. Obviously, uh, more North Carolina fans than there are Georgia Tech fans here in the Greensboro Coliseum, and their ball club has a one-point lead. Mansell gets it low to Harvey, who's been quiet lately, had the ball knocked away and stolen by Georgia. Crowd into the ball game. Maybe Carolina will be momentarily. Braddock, that's Cecil Exum, number 50, who checked in moments ago, and Darty. Darty trapped in the corner, almost had the five-second count on. Shot clock is down to 12 seconds. Darty looks low, gets it to Jordan, backing in, and Jordan had the ball knocked out of his hand, and Jordan got away with something there. Michael Jordan was backing in as he was getting that pass and establishing his position. Well, Michael Jordan, the key to getting position is trying to get as close to the basket as you can. You saw him get fouled on the way up, but you can see the intensity on his face when he gets that ball 10 feet from the basket. He wants to make something happen, and nine times out of 10, he does. Well, it, it's bred of confidence because he knows most of the time it's going to go in the hole. Jordan at the free throw line. Just having a marvelous year. Has a chance to increase North Carolina's lead, and he does. 27-20, uh, make it 28-26, and Jordan has 15 points. And North Carolina only two of six from the three-point line. In fact, Michael Jordan has hit both of those. Georgia Tech one for one. Free throw again by Jordan. Give him 16, and he has hit all six of his free throw attempts this afternoon. 29-26. Here comes the full court pressure, and you hear the crowd again. It's amazing what one shot or one key play can do. But there you we saw Sam Perkins go up and stuff the ball. It ignited the crowd, and it's ignited the Carolina defense. That was Mansell, who did a good job against the press, got the basketball. Carolina being a little more aggressive on defense right now, and this is Price back outside to Thomas, and he knocks it home from 15. George Thomas very cool and is hitting the shots he has taken. Good guard play out of Price and Thomas. Both of them penetrating into that defense and punching out to the open man. That's been one of the keys for their offense today. Thomas with his second basket of the game has Tech back within one at 29-28. That's Exum. Forced one out of the lane and got it over the front of the rim and rolled it in. Cecil Exum from Dudley, North Carolina with his first two. 31-28. The Tar Heels over the Yellow Jackets. 
Thomas guarded by the freshman Hale. Double team on Bird, cross court to Price. Three for a second into the lane, nice pass to Harvey, and Harvey is fouled as he goes strong toward the bucket. Nice ball movement again. Good ball movement and excellent guard play. We'll get a look at Mark Price. He's got his man beat. He goes up, throws the defense to him, dumps it off to Harvey at the last minute, and I'm impressed with the way Harvey is going up to the basket. Boy, so am I. Watch the way Harvey handles the ball. Early in the season, he wasn't doing it. Handles it, and he goes up so strong. Big guys, when they get it that close, should be thinking, I'm going to get fouled first, and then if it goes in fine, and that's what he's doing. Harvey finally misses a free throw. He'd hit his first three. 31-28, Carolina by three. Put this one strong off the back of the rim. This is Mansell with a follow shot. No good. Harvey with a monster rebound and the follow. Tim Harvey with 13 points. And the freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey, is showing them all something here this afternoon. 31-30. Tech back within one. These kids are playing tough. And there is Harvey. And that was a bad foul. It was a play. It really wasn't going to do him any good, even if he got to where he wanted to be, and he commits the first one. Well, he's a little over anxious. I'm sure Bobby Crimmins said, don't let Perkins get the ball easily. He was trying to overplay, and he just he just fell on him, actually. Here, we'll get a look at it. He's coming over the back, and his momentum carried him. For Tim Harvey, only his second personal foul, so he is not in a lot of danger right now, and it will send Perkins to the free throw line, where he already has 11 points this afternoon. We've seen this play for Carolina quite a bit, trying to get the ball inside. Two key things have to happen. The offensive player has to get good position, as we saw Sam Perkins do that time. But also the pass has to be away from the defense. Again, Sam Perkins missed the free throw. Mark Price grabs the rebound. Perkins must be wondering what's gone wrong with those free throws. Tech with a chance to take the lead again. This is Price with Jordan on. A height mismatch. Jordan with six inches in advantage. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Price will bring it back outside. He glances up at it to get a good look. Down to six. Thomas, baseline shot, scores again. George Thomas puts Georgia Tech back in the lead, and they worked that shot clock down to three seconds. Yes, they did. You were very alertly caught. Price looking up at the basket. He let Thomas know there was just a little time left on the clock. Hale inside to Doherty. He is fouled before the shot. No. Or he commits the foul. Take Doherty. a look. Here you'll see him give him a little bump first. Well, contact both ways. He was called for the offensive foul. There's Dean Smith. You can bet he is not particularly happy with the circumstances right now because his club is down by one with 2.15 to go in the half. We, we've mentioned before, the last two minutes of the half are very, very important. Tech has already managed to take the crowd back out of this ball game, and there's the free throw that is no good. This is an important 2.15. Very definitely is. Georgia Tech has to contain and control the basketball. This is Jordan. Gets it off to Doherty, left all alone, and sort of hesitated on the shot, almost like he didn't want to take it. And then Matt couldn't hit on it. Well, that's his shot. He'll never rush a shot. You'll very seldom see Matt Doherty shoot a quick shot. He took his time. It just didn't drop. It was almost like a double pump, though, and there wasn't anybody there. This is Price working hard, goes to the baseline. He can't get his shot. Shot clock down to nine again. And here comes George Thomas, who has been terrific so far. Missed this one. And the foul is going to be against Georgia Tech. I think they call it on Mansell for pushing off underneath. And Mansell with that look of disbelief. Michael Jordan will go to the free throw line. That's the kind of foul that a coach really doesn't mind. If your guys are scrapping and digging under the basket, you'll give up some fouls like that. Carolina's had some trouble at the line. Only 7 for 12 so far. Tech is 5 for 8, but Jordan has had no trouble. He is 6 out of 6. The rest of the team is 1 for 6 so far. Jordan with 16. He has been the offense with more than half of Carolina's points so far. 133 to go in the half. And Michael Jordan ties it at 32. It'd be hard to find a better all-around guard anywhere in the country. I got a call this week, Mike, from someone saying, who do you think are the top 10 players in the country and so forth? And I got to think Michael Jordan, in my book, is one of the most valuable players in the country. And if he continues to play like he is, 
and Carolina does well down the stretch, I think he might be a candidate for MVP. Bobby Cremens wants to talk it over with 1.33 to go in the first half. The score, North Carolina 33, Georgia Tech 32. North Carolina by one point over Georgia Tech. And once again, a look at Tim Harvey who's played a brilliant ball game. Here's the missed shot by Manziel Harvey coming from the free throw line going up strong. And I am totally surprised, Mike, at how effective Georgia Tech is inside against North Carolina today. I didn't expect that. In fact, had you asked, I probably would have said Georgia Tech's big chance was on three-point basket. But so they've would gone I. in and they've attacked their strength. And for at least a half, after staying right with the University of North Carolina. And take a look at the field goal percentages. Tech shooting almost 62%. They're leading in rebounds. The only thing that keeps them from being in a big lead is they've committed nine turnovers. But you've got to remember, they've played against pressure the whole half, and they've used the same two guards, Price and Thomas, the whole half. Thomas, very cool against the double team, gets it to Price, and Price finally gets free for a shot, missed it, but gets his own rebound. Gets a new 30 seconds on the shot clock, and we're down to 1.15 to go in the half. Thomas has been very impressive today, too. He is quick, and he's made almost everything he's shot. He misses that one, and the long rebound comes to Hale. He's got Jordan on his left and gets it to Jordan at the baseline. They'll loop it inside to John Brownlee, and Brownlee has the ball taken away, and then Thomas stepped on the baseline as he tried to start the break. Good double team. That's exactly what we've seen from the Georgia Tech defense. When the ball goes inside, attack the ball. George Thomas got it, but he stepped out of bounds. Bobby Crimmins has to be tremendously proud of his kids so far. They have given him everything he could possibly hope for against Carolina. They have not hung their head, and that's a tribute to Bobby Cremens, the coach, because he's had him fired up. This is Jordan, fakes the three-pointer and gets inside a little bit. Price let him go. Very little he could do about it. Just would hope he'd missed the shot, but he did not. He actually played great defense. Caused Michael to double clutch the ball. He still put it in softly off the glass. Jordan with 20 points, and Carolina leads at 35-32. There is Price. Baseline to Mansell. Missed the shot. Price tried to keep it alive, and Perkins gets the rebound to Hale. Now to 23 seconds to go. The shot clock not a factor right now. Perkins would have been a three-pointer. The long rebound to Peterson. 14 seconds to go in the half. Perkins again, that time dumped it off to Peterson. Three-pointer, no good. And Price gets the long rebound. Six seconds to go in the half. Down to four. Price, three-pointer. Oh, almost hit it. He shot that one a little early. and both of them from our seat look good. They were straight. One was short, one was just a little long. I think... Kremens encourages his club, even though they made the turnover. He saw the clock, got it to Harvey, who didn't realize it was down to one. Harvey passed the ball instead of shooting. And I'm sure the bench was talking to him. Harvey didn't realize it was that critical. Braddock to Jordan. Had the three-pointer and passed on it. It's 35-35. Baseline drive by Doherty. And he stepped out of bounds. Three-second violation, rather. They called that before the force out of bounds, and Georgia Tech will get the ball back. At what point, Jeff, does Dean Smith and the Carolina players become concerned about this? Price again. That ball may, he may have hit his hand a little on that one. Yeah, he usually doesn't miss by that much. Jordan, great drive. The basket counts, and it'll be a blocking foul call against the pack. And Bobby Kremens doesn't care for that one at all. Bobby Kremens outrage. Now the ball beat the pressure. Jordan from Vincent. all about. He just hopes that hit. Oh, man, was that pretty. This club on top, 28-25, or 38-35. Another air ball. Here comes Carolina on the run, and Doherty travels because of Mark Price. 
Price got his position and forced Doherty to do something he didn't want. Excellent play by Mark Price. When you're getting back on defense against a fast break, you got two choices. You either attack the ball or you drop all the way back. Mark Price attacked the man with the ball, causing Doherty to walk. 38-35, Carolina by three. They inbound, and it's stolen. The alley-oop to Jordan, and Price was just going to go. He missed the slam. Michael Jordan must be wondering what's going on. Now Doherty with a follow. He missed. Matt Doherty, he misses. Here's the rebound to Georgia Tech, but the foul is going to go against the Yellow Jackets. Jordan missed the jam, and I've never been able to do that. Anyhow, that's got to be a little embarrassing. Here's a great steal. It looked like they were off rhythm for the alley-oop. Michael Jordan went up the dunk. Price wasn't going to do anything. He could have laid it in, but North Carolina stayed after it. Doherty finally fouled by Harvey before the shot. Call it a non-shooting foul. You're right. 18-19 to go. 38-35. Carolina by three. They have the basketball. Braddock against a what looks like a 1-3-1 Georgia Tech zone off the inbounds pass. Doherty does not shoot instead to Perkins for that little turnaround. Missed the shot. Brad Doherty followed. No good. Tipped outside. Whistle. And the foul is going to be on Sam Perkins. We've seen a lot of reaching over fouls on the North Carolina team, particularly today. And one of the reasons is Georgia Tech has a small team, but they're quick, and they are fighting for inside position. The taller North Carolina players are being called for reaching over the back. Georgia Tech has not played uh, anyone over 6'4", with the exception of Harvey and briefly Mansell. Here is Price, dumps it off to Harvey. Harvey almost walked back out to Price's jumper, no good. Jordan with a rebound. Tech missed an opportunity there. Jordan to Braddock, fakes the three-pointer. Perkins will take a three-pointer. Missed it. North Carolina crashing the boards, but Tech with good position inside. you got to give little guys like 6'5 Pearson a lot of credit. They have done the job on the boards and kept their team in this basketball game. They've done it with positioning, good inside, blocking out on the offensive board. Timeout on the court with 17.37 to go in the game. The score, North Carolina, 38 men who are on the court right now have three personal fouls. Could become a factor down the stretch. Georgia Tech doesn't have much of a bench to go to, so it's very important. They're his smaller players battling very hard and, of course, picking up the fouls in the process. George Thomas being guarded by Braddock. Gets it to Harvey. Looking for his shot. Can't get it. Outside to Thomas. Shot clock is down to six, and Thomas forces it out of the lane over Doherty, and he got it. Over Brad Doherty. Great individual play by Thomas. And there we saw some respect for Sam Perkins, too. Fans might have missed it. Harvey got the ball where he's been going to the basket, but he knew Perkins was on him. He turned around and threw it out. Eight points for Thomas, and it's 38-37. North Carolina by one. Into Jordan, had the ball stripped away, almost stolen, but Perkins got it back. Here's Jordan, jumper out of the corner, no good with only five seconds left on the shot clock, and the foul is going to be on Harvey, and I, he can't believe it. And Bobby Crimmins up and after the official again. Take a Michael look. Jordan with an excellent look at the basket, just couldn't get it to drop. Harvey's called for the foul, and Bobby Crimmins a little upset there, and he has a reason to be. He's only got... He's the only big man is in foul trouble. Perkins lost the ball out of bounds, but it's going to be out to North Carolina. They said it was blocked out of bounds. Tech is playing some real tough defense inside. Yes, they are. They're battling. North Carolina has been getting easy baskets off this out of bounds play. That time they tried just to high lob the Perkins. That's Braddock. Get it low to Jordan again. They double team him whenever they get the ball inside. 16 minutes, 32 seconds to go in the ballgame. Perkins tried to score, crashed the board, ball still alive. Out of bounds, and it's out to Georgia Tech. And now the Carolina fans come up angry. North Carolina doing two things differently this second half. A little more pressure defensively, as we can see now. But they're also pounding those offensive boards, trying to get second and third shots. Really are. And Bobby Crimmins has Mansell up off the bench. You'll get him back in there at the next opportunity. Ball is knocked out of bounds, or almost saved by Thomas. Tech could take the lead again right here. Here is Pearson. They'll call him for a travel as he tried to go to the baseline call we see quite often in college basketball that quick little shuffle of the feet before we make our move usually comes because players are a little too anxious to make the move before they have control of the basketball tech has missed some really good opportunities here early in the second half we'll see what effect that has three points 
two-pointer by Jordan Short. Ball comes outside, and Georgia Tech with a chance on the fast break. Bradford to Price, baseline jumper, it's good, and Georgia Tech has the lead on North Carolina at 39 to 38. Doherty outside, looking low for Jordan. They've really taken the crowd out of the ball game. Yes, they have. That last shot by Michael Jordan, a three-point play. The rebound was long, and it started the fast break for, North, for Georgia Tech. Where Sam Perkins comes back with his favorite little jump hook, a tough shot to stop inside. Perkins answers, and he has 14 points in the ball game. Jordan, uh, the leading scorer, make it 13. Michael Jordan still the leading scorer on the floor. Nice pass inside by Bradford, but uh, not ready for it was Mansell, the young, the freshman out of Sharon, Pennsylvania. And Bobby Crimmins uh, trying to get one of his players' attention. You can hear him calling Jack, Jack Mansell. That was good basketball. Bradford made an excellent pass. Mansell just not ready to handle it. Mansell, 6'7", but he's playing the center position now in place of Harvey. 40 to 39, Carolina back on top by a point. Jordan, bad pass off the hands of Perkins, who was moving through the lane, and Georgia Tech will take the ball back. George Thomas picked up by Braddock. 14 minutes, 47 seconds to go, along with Jeff Mullins. This is Mike Patrick. Hope you're enjoying the ball game. It's been a beauty so far. Thomas went up for the shot. Braddock took the ball away from him, and here's the ball tipped away on the other end by Thomas. So George, who has the ball stolen from him on one end, steals it back on the other. Good basketball by Thomas, not giving up after he lost the basketball, stealing it back. Price is being guarded by Peterson. They clear the right side, get it low to Mansell, hesitate, put it up and in. That was almost a triple pump on Mansell's part. Nice play by Mansell, and Doherty, knowing he has four fouls, laid off. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan three-pointer. And that gives Carolina a 43-41 lead. Boy, if he can't get the ball inside, he just comes out to about 22 feet. They give it to him. He can hurt you so many ways. Price almost got all the way down the lane. Instead, comes back outside. He's working on the baseline. Double team goes up for the shot. Drew the foul. Foul is going to be on Buzz Peterson. And Price almost a certainty to score from the free throw line. But... That time, Mark Price did it himself, one-on-one. -on -one. He saw an opening to the basket. He went up. He made contact with Peterson before the shot. He'll go to the free throw line for two shots. There are the turnovers. First half, Tech really hurt themselves. Here in the second half, they've already committed four in the first six and a half minutes, and they have been at critical points, Jeff, when they had chance to get baskets. Yes, they have, and, and North Carolina, on the other hand, when they've gotten possession, has been a little bit careless with the ball this second half. Price, two for three from the line, now make it three for four, and 13 points. His average is 18.3. That's the third best in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Hits again, and we're tied at 43. Georgia Tech not about to fold its tent and go home. Got to give them a lot of credit for the way they played today. It's been a gutsy performance without John Sally, their leading rebounder and second leading scorer. And Sam Perkins is on the bench now, and so is Michael Jordan. we got Doherty and Martin in there underneath. Braddock, three-point effort, no good. Long rebound, knocked outside to Thomas, ahead to Price. And Price tried to get the ball to Pearson. It was not a good pass, and Matt Doherty picked it off. Tech could have taken the lead again there. Braddock, Matt Doherty. Dory will shoot it, a little short, and the rebound goes to Thomas, who scrambles for the loose ball. Bodies flying now as Warren Martin went down. No one can seem to get the ball in the basket except Jordan and Perkins for the Carolina team. Very unusual. Here's Thomas to Price. They ran him around a double screen to get him free for the shot, and he missed it. First time he's really been all alone all day. Couldn't hit the shot. Georgia Tech has had two possessions now where they've had a good chance to get a basket. They can't get it to drop. Once again, the shot out of the corner is no good. Fight for the ball inside, taken away by Thomas. This kid has really done a job today. He is the only senior out there for Tech. He has protected the basketball, and how many times has he stole it inside with quick hands as he did that time? Now they run a 1-4 offense, and they get the ball inside. They have to pass it back outside. And we have a foul 
or a three-second violation. Lenny Words called three seconds on Bradford. Bradford had the right idea. He had the two men that are in foul trouble. I think he lost his courage at the last second trying to go up to draw the foul. And Bobby Crimmins has seen his team make several mistakes on consecutive possessions down court, and he wants to talk about it. With 12.23 to go in the game, there's a timeout with the score. North Carolina 43, Georgia ball game. We have a 43-43 tie. And at some point, uh, let's take a look at Warren Martin. He's one of the favorite of the Tar Heel fans. Here we'll see him trying to get inside position. A little bit of pushing going on. Not bad for a big guy, though. You like your big guys to be aggressive. Great steal by Thomas inside. Well, at his size, I guess if he wants to get inside possession, he's going to get it. <laughs> And you like to see him aggressive like that. I'm sure Coach Dean Smith is happy to see him working hard inside for position. Turn Jeff, on. you know what he wants to be after school. I understand. One of his goals is to be an astronaut. He'll certainly be the biggest one we've seen of those so far. <laughs> be bigger than two. Jordan, who has just had a brilliant ball game, double team and gives it up. Matt Doherty, baseline, little double pump, can't get it to go, but Perkins with a rebound. His follow shot no good, but he's fouled by Mansell. And if you're going to commit a good foul, that was one, because Perkins is not going to miss it from two feet away. When he's that close to the basket, we'll see Doherty go up for the shot. He's got a good look at the basket. Again, it won't drop. Perkins is Johnny on the spot, gets the rebound, and it's foul. Perkins goes to the free throw line, and Sam has had some trouble there today. He has made one out of four, and he came in as... Uh, what are his statistics? 85.4%. He had to rattle that one around. You're going to have those days, and yet you look at Sam. He's shooting the same way. He's got great rotation on the ball. Just one of those days it won't drop, but you got to stay after it. And look at the concentration on his face. North Carolina with a one-point lead. Perkins with 14 points on the afternoon, going for number 15, and he's got it. That's his season's average, and it's a two-point spread again. Young players at home watching. Sam Perkins had a bad first half. Notice the time he took. He concentrated, really cleared his mind, and had great concentration on the shot. Hit low. George Thomas all the way down the lane. Oh, great effort by Thomas. The bucket wouldn't go, but he draws the foul. Same type move that Bradford had a minute ago. That time he continued. Great one-on-one -on -one move, rotation dribble there. Goes right at the big guy, Martin. He's fouled, almost gets the basket, too. Here's the penetration by the Georgia Tech guards as we talked about. Here you'll see Martin picking up the play a little late. He's called for the foul. Now that is number four on Martin. On Martin, the other center, Brad Doherty, also has four. Free throw by George Thomas is good. George Thomas had quite an afternoon for Tech. Mike, I mentioned quite often the guard play and penetrating guards and how important it is, but when you can get your small people into that lane area, it makes people react. It makes the big guys pull off their men, and it creates opening, and we've seen Mark Price and Thomas do that continually for their team today. Ten points for Thomas, and it's 45-45. Martin is down low to Braddock. This is Jordan. Three-pointer. It's good. for a four-point play. That time, Michael Jordan, wide open. Mark Price coming over to help out. Fouled him as the ball was released. 29 points for Michael Jordan. And you see Bobby Crimmins talking to Anthony Bird. What can you do to stop Jordan? Virtually nothing. I mean, he's going to get his share no matter what you do. Sounds repetitious, but he hurts you so many ways. Inside, on the offensive board, outside of the so Jordan man up. just made a four-point play. He has 30, and it's 49-45. Michael Jordan with 30 of the 49 points. Tech back the other way here is Pearson. Now call it for a travel as he gets in the line. And once again, Bobby Crimmins is up saying, give us a break. Twice this half, Danny Pearson has been called for walking. That time, he made a good move, tried to put on the brake. It looked like his feet slipped a little bit. Here is Braddock to Jordan. We're down to 11 minutes and six seconds to go in the ballgame. Carolina being very patient on this possession. They're working Doherty and Perkins in the middle. This is Perkins with 10 seconds to go in the shot clock. Jordan tries to get it low to Martin. Turn around. He scores, and they are going to call Pearson for the foul. They're trying to break it open on him right now. North Carolina, very, very patient this time, moving the basketball. 
when they got it into Martin, he did a great thing this time, something he hasn't been doing. He didn't bring the ball down, didn't dribble it. He turned around and shot it. Notice the ball only comes down about his chest. He goes right up strong. That time, Georgia Tech couldn't get those quick hands on it, and he was called. He's got a chance for the three-point play. A little tough to call Danny Pearson for that. He might, have, he might have gotten a bad break on that play. Here is Martin trying to complete the three-point play. Missed it. It's tipped outside. And you see that uh, Tim Harvey, number 44, for Tech, is back in the ballgame. Georgia Tech's been in a little drought. This is an important possession for them. 51-45. This is Bird. And they're going to call Bird for a trap. That was a good call. He tried to reach around that door. And he, he dragged his pivot foot. Bobby Kremens just wondering what he can do right now. He'll get Pearson out, and he'll bring Maurice Bradford back in the ballgame up front. It's 51-45, to 45, and there you see the difference. Tech with 11 more turnovers here in the ballgame. Otherwise, who knows? Perkins, turnaround jumper from the lane, and it looks like Carolina may have hit its stride right now. defensive pressure this North Carolina team is putting on. Price, who doesn't rattle very much, working against Jordan, gets it low to Harvey, and Harvey finally missed the shot inside. Harvey has not scored in the second half after getting 13 in the, sec in the first half. Jordan, and that may be a travel, it is not. They're going to call a foul on Price. And Bobby Cremens is up, indicating it had to be a travel. Cremens has not had a good four or five minutes. No, he's concerned. And as we mentioned, he's got to stay with his team, really show the effort over there on the sideline. He's drawing with the official a little bit now. 9.53 to go in the ball game. What had been a seesaw battle is now an eight-point spread with North Carolina on top, 53-45. to 45. And Jordan will go back to the free-throw line. Jordan, if he hits a pair, will match his career high of 32. And he misses the first. He had 30. Ever feel like a jinx? 32 last week against Duke, so he's on a tear right now. As his team is doing well, so is Michael Jordan. 10 of 11 today. That was the first miss going for 31 points, and he has it. 31 for Jordan. Carolina's a team with 54, and this is the biggest spread we've had of the day. 54 to 45. North Carolina over Georgia Tech by nine. Mark Price, and now the three-pointer may become much more important, and there is Price with one, and he drilled it. The net barely moved. That Price was, well, was 17. Well behind the three-point line, too, with Michael Jordan hand in his face. Great effort. 54-48. That's the way you can cut into a nine-point lead. Perkins against the triple team. Missed the shot, and Michael Jordan is going to be called for the personal as he just sailed in from the outside of the circle. Weak side offensive rebounding. Michael Jordan coming with momentum. Gets well above the rim, but he went over the back. Here's the little jump hook by Sam Perkins, his favorite shot. Jordan coming in from out of nowhere, called for the foul. 54-48, the margin six. Plenty of time left, nine minutes and 20 seconds. We're in Greensboro, North Carolina, Mike Patrick and Jeff Mullins. It's been a dandy so far. George Thomas, who's played just extremely well, and dishes it off to Bradford, and they'll call Bradford for travel. That was a good call. That was a good call. Bradford tried to do the right thing. He couldn't control the basketball, but that's four times in this second half. Georgia Tech has lost the ball with a traveling violation. They now have 12 more turnovers than North Carolina. That has been the major difference. But they have played their hearts out. And Carolina has scored 20 points off of Georgia Tech turnover. Shot clock is down to seven. Down to five, Perkins to Doherty, baseline with two. Missed, tip, no good, and Tech will come out with it. Harvey with another good rebound. 54-48, and Bobby Kremen says, let's talk about it. We're not out of the ball game. Let's stay in it. 8.35 to go, and they have stayed in it. Yes, they have. You know, Mike, we talk about these walking possessions. They're not always the result of the offensive player. It can be the defense. 
Timeout with a score, 54-48 Carolina. Make that ball go in the basket, Mike. So they talk about things like defensive intensity. I know Dean Smith has got to be pleased with the intensity and the turnovers that they, their defense has caused. Bobby Kremens on the other side is probably going to talk about controlling the basketball, trying to get good shots. Keep working on those defensive boards. Don't let Carolina have those second and third shots. You have to feel the Tech starters have got to be getting a little tired. They have played most of the game with five players. They have had seven men on the floor. And you can see how uh, Georgia Tech has shot uh, very close to North Carolina for the, for the lead in the conference in three-point shooting. And they're going to have to hit a couple probably here down the stretch to stay in it. George Thomas. They like to clear one side, though we'll let Thomas work. And he gets a little penetration back out to Price. He's being pushed a little bit by Jordan. And they're finally going to call Jordan for the foul. And he was really giving Price a Jordan forearm here and there. No question. Jordan had a forearm in, on his hip. And Lenny Wirtz very alertly called it. You'll see this as we get a look at the action. Watch the forearm right in there. A little subtle pressure. And as Price changes direction, it's back there again. Good alert call by the official. Non-shooting foul, though, inbound it to Bird. He's double teamed, bad pass, and Jordan will come down. One on three break, and Michael thinks better out of it, brings it up, brings it out, rather. Doherty, Braddock fakes the three point. Jordan, great pass to Perkins. You can only make that pass if you can stay in the air as long as Michael Jordan did. He jumped up, looked at three different teammates, before he saw Sam Perkins underneath. 19 points for Perkins. I think you could actually time Jordan with a stopwatch, like hang time for punts. You know, he had a teammate last year that he learned that from, and that was James Worthy. He could do it very well. Steal. And then Braddock kicks the ball out of bounds. Oh, no. Said Price kicks it out of bounds. 7.33, left in the ballgame, 56-48 Carolina. Another turnover for, North, uh, for Georgia Tech, and you mentioned, Mike, North Carolina has 22 points from turnover. Sometimes when your offense isn't clicking, that defense can get your offense going, and that's what we've seen with North Carolina today. Perkins out to Jordan. Time starting to become a factor. Three-point effort, they got it. Michael Jordan now has 34. points of career high and 34 of Carolina's 59. Whoa, what a show Michael Jordan is putting on. Here is Price. Great feed inside to Thomas. Mark Price always with his head up, dribbling among the taller people. Very good pass. Thomas in the right spot. Here's Jordan again. Low to Perkins. Lost or low to Doherty. He lost the ball. And he was hacked on the arm as he tried to turn into the lane. Bradford called for reaching in, but that's what Georgia Tech has been doing very successfully, knocking it away from the big men down low. 59-50, send Doherty to the free throw line. Here's a second half score, not a final. Duke leading Clemson, 65-62. Good games all over this afternoon. It's a big game in Durham, North Carolina. Today. Free throw is good by Doherty. 6'11 freshman from Black Mountain, North Carolina has played, uh, Black Mountain, North Carolina has played most of this game with four personal fouls. Misses the second free throw. Did you see, Jordan? Holy cow. Inside position, or middle position on the free throw line. The ball came out long. Michael Jordan went up like his name was on the basketball. They call the foul on Bradford. Bradford, that is number five. He'll come out of the ball game, and Jack Mansell, number 34, will run back into your picture to play at a forward spot. Just out man. Nothing you can do on that kind of rebound effort when Michael Jordan is in the right spot. And he gets to the right spot so quickly. One of his great strengths. Jordan with 34 is career high, and he's just building on that. One and one. Missed the first. Harvey with a rebound. Gets it out to Price. Three on three break, and Price from three-point range. No good, but he's fouled. Mark Maybe on Jordan, I think, because Jordan says, I didn't do it. Foul from behind, and Price gives a little slap of his hands. He wanted that try yes, at a four-point play. Tech needs them, too. They're down 60 to 50. Price and Doherty exchange uh, a couple of friendly words. 
And Price will go to the free throw line. He'll get a pair here. Hits the first. Mark Price with 19 points. Just over his average. Young man's a keeper, isn't he? Yes, he is. And you've got to be impressed not only with his ability to run the team, but he came into Georgia Tech as a big scorer in high school. He's being very patient on his shots. If it's not there, he's not taking it. 60 to 52. Tech still within striking distance. Braddock to Jordan. And now to Perkins. Tech in a zone. Plenty of time left on the shot clock. We're at 15. This is Perkins with that little jump hook. He missed it. defense and the way he goes to the offensive boards he gets a hand on it before anybody else has even gone up that time he beat everybody up to the ball tipped it in with his left hand jordan has no i think he has 36 now the 62 i think the big difference mike between this first and second half has been the intensity of the north carolina defense they really are going after the ball creating turnovers and creating easy baskets at the other end. They gave the last North Carolina basket, uh, I believe, to Doherty. Here's Sam Perkins going up. Nice soft jump hook. Doherty, well, Doherty, it looked like Jordan had his hand inside Doherty's. I would have given it to Jordan, but that's our angle. Well, they figured he's had everything else this afternoon, so let's spread it around a little bit. Here is Price. Scores again. 62-54. Georgia Tech, to their credit, is going to get out with all their guns blazing. We're at the six minute mark from Greensboro. Braddock directing traffic to Perkins at the high ball. Jordan. Well, if they took the last basket away, he'll come down to make a three point. Give him 37 points. Jeez, what a performance. 65 54. Thomas, he has had a fine game for Tech, the Mansell. Gets it to Price, runs around the body on the floor as a screen. Missed a shot, but Thomas will get the rebound. Two very intelligent basketball teams on the court today. They have played smart. Pearson, shot clock down to 15, and Harvey inside couldn't get it, but Mansell with a follow shot. Jack Mansell with a nice play in the soft touch from the baseline. Tough angle, too. He was behind the backboard, made a nice move. 65-56. We're down to the five-minute mark, and time is running out for Georgia Tech. They get a load of Doherty and the steal by George Thomas. Thomas has been all over the court. We talk about Michael Jordan, but George Thomas has done a great job for his team today. Just about everybody that's been on the floor has played well today. Thomas to Mansell at the high post. Mansell, who hit his last shot, may be encouraged to try to take another one. This is Pearson down the lane with a nice boom, but he missed the shot. Four minutes, 32 seconds to go in the ballgame. Braddock, right side, Matt Doherty missed the shot. Matt Doherty has had a tough day shooting, but he he's gets a, his own rebound. He's had a tough day in his rhythm. You can see it's off. He doesn't have a smooth release on the ball, and I think he's thinking about it a little bit. Pearson got the rebound, and Bobby Cremens wants to give his team a little bit of a breather because he's still got a shot at this ball game. There's a timeout on the court, 65-56. They have uh, credited the one basket we showed you on a replay. Instead of uh, Doherty, they've given it back to Jordan, so he now has 39 points on the afternoon. You know, your great players are supposed to be there when you need them, and we've seen that with Perkins and Jordan today, but very unusual for North Carolina. They have 58 points of the 68, 65 for North Carolina. They left freshman Jack Mansell all alone, so he took the shot and buried it. 65 to 58. Hale to Martin. Looking for the alley-oop to Perkins. Off his hands, and here is the steal by Thomas. Tech is not out of this. Believe me, it's 65 58. Thomas looking for Price. Instead, he goes to Pearson to Mansell. There's Price, three-pointer. He got it. 65 to 61. Don't go away. Dean Smith 
Coach says those three-pointers can change it in a hurry. It is 65-61 with 3.23 left in this ball game from second clock. The 30-second clock is off, and I'm sure Bobby Crimmins in his huddle is anticipating. Here we get a great look at that three-point basket by Mark Price. That was not an accident, Mike. That was a design play. He came around a pick and got the opportunity to take the three-point basket. I started to mention Bobby Kremens has to anticipate that North Carolina will let the air out of the ball a little bit. What his team cannot afford to do is give up an easy basket. Plenty of time, four points down, three minutes, 23 seconds left to go. North Carolina has four timeouts left. Georgia Tech only has one, and there you see the three-point shooting so far. Tech hitting 50%. North Carolina now spreading it out with three minutes and 15 seconds to go. They'll be looking for an easy layup. Tech needs a break somewhere along here. Perkins will just hold the ball. Harvey looks toward Bobby Crimmins and decides he's got to come out on him. You've got to at least get close enough for the official to start that five-second count. You've got to challenge it. And this is when the freshman players for Georgia Tech, they've played a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort to get out there and put pressure on the basketball. Right now, they're just putting a subtle pressure. If they're going to get it back, they're going to need to, going to, need to intensify this pressure. They have got to be dog-tired because five guys have played most of the way. They have played very, very hard. Clock works its way down to 235. Carolina leads by four. Georgia Tech's immediate problem is they have to find a way to get the basketball. This is Peterson. The Darty. When you reach the point that you have to foul. Well, I think with two minutes, if they haven't gotten a steal or a turnover, they're going to have to come out and really put the pressure on, try and steal it, try and foul. We're down to two minutes and ten seconds. Carolina leading at 65-61. Doherty outside to Jordan. Jordan with 39 points today. Two minutes inside two minutes now. And Georgia Tech simply has to get more aggressive, otherwise North Carolina will do this for another 51-51 and walk out of the building. That's right. They've got to come up. They know they need the ball at least two more times to get back in this basketball game. Looking toward the bench, Bobby Crimmins just shook his head at Harvey saying no. Maybe not yet. We're down to 136. Here's a whistle, and Pearson is going to be called for reaching out and committing a foul on Buzz Peterson as Peterson went by. Peterson, a 71% free throw shooter. And there aren't very many Carolina players you can foul and find a bad free throw shooter. Not on the floor right now, particularly. Peterson is a good outside shooter. Probably, based on his outside shooting, he should be doing a little bit better from the free throw line, but he's not a regular. It's a little tougher coming off the bench and being an excellent free throw shooter. Now, Bobby Crimmins up talking uh, to official Lenny Wirtz and one of the scorers at the scorer's table with 1.35 to go. I don't know what the delay is in particular. And now his team is going to come over. And we've got Pearson fouling out of the ball game, so Crimmins... Is take, he's got 30 seconds under the rules to put a substitute in there, and he uses it as a free timeout. Yeah, he got a little bit of a consultation in, too, and he put in Anthony Bird, who is, along with Price, is their other outside shooter, the best outside shooter on the team next to Price. Peterson at the free throw line. These are big free throws. One and one. Hits the first. Good concentration on the free throw. Watch the form. He takes his time, clears his head, gets good, comfortable position, good follow through. Three points on the day. Now make it four for Buzz Peterson. The lead is six. In theory, that is two three point buckets, 67 to 61. Look out for Price. He will be on the right sideline. Now they'll run him down the baseline, try to get a screen for him and get him the basketball. And Peterson is overplaying him, trying to deny him the ball. North Carolina in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. This is Price working for his shot. Muscles it up from the lane. No good, but Mansell with a rebound. Got it to Price. It's down on the floor. And they're going to call Jack Mansell for a foul on me. Tough break for Georgia Tech. Because they had a shot to cut it to four there. Mark Price, it wasn't, he wasn't on balance when he shot the shot. He got in between the defenders, but he had to force the shot up. Not a real good shot. Mansell made a good effort on the rebound. Lost the ball on the way up. Key play. 
Perkins was there to pick it up, and he was fouled. So Perkins will go to the free throw line, and Sam has had a little trouble there today. He has hit only one of uh, one of five. Make it three of six. He hit his last two. And he hits this one. Perkins has had a good day, but of course the story has been Michael Jordan. Yes, it is. Michael Jordan hit seven for eight, six of seven three three point goals today. Free throw again, good. And the spread is now at the 69-61. 21 points for Sam Perkins. This is Price. Georgia Tech needs a basket and a couple of breaks. Harvey to Bird. Time running out, 56 seconds. Mansell to Bird. Jumper just outside the three-point lane. He was right on the line, and Bobby Grimmins coming up saying, I wanted that three-point play. And he did not get it. 69-63. Granick being dogged by Price. Trying to run time off the clock. Peterson dribbling through trouble. Had it knocked away, but Braddock got it back. 26 seconds to go. And there's the foul final. They seem to want to foul Peterson. I think he's the one that's new in the game. He's not quite as fresh as the others. All the other guys, Braddock, Jordan, Perkins, Doherty, they've been there before, and he knows what they'll do on the line down the stretch. 25 seconds left, 69-63. Peterson at the free throw line. He hit his last two there just a moment ago. That's another. Big one and ones. Big free throws. Five points for Buzz Peterson, sophomore from Asheville, who is capable of playing either guard for Carolina. Free throw this time, no good. Tipped outside to Bird. 21 seconds left. Bird to Harvey. Harvey trying to get it the ball to someone who can shoot a three-pointer. Instead, they get it to Price, who drives and scores. Mark Price, fine effort, and Georgia Tech will stop the clock with their last remaining timeout. 13 seconds left. It's 70 to 65. 26 points from Mark Price. And that might have been his great. Not much hope, Jeff, but some. Georgia Tech has hung in there all afternoon. We'd like to take an opportunity to thank Georgia Tech Athletic Director Dr. Homer Rice, head basketball coach Bobby Crimmins and his staff, and Sports Information Director Brooke Tinsley and Assistant SID Jeff Keener for their help with today's telecast. Also, our gracious thanks to UNC Athletic Director John Swafford, head basketball coach Dean Smith and his staff, and Sports Information Director Rick Rohr. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your help in getting ready for this telecast. And here is a foul as Tech has to commit to personal with 12 seconds left. Nothing else, they simply have to stop the clock. And Jack Mansell called for an intentional foul. Perkins will get two shots. Bobby Crimmins will take uh, Harvey out of the ball game. And he'll get in Greg Wilson, who shows up for the first time. 6'8", 220 pound junior from Grand Ridge, Florida. Plays very sparingly. And for Harvey, his fifth personal foul. Harvey with 13 points in the first half has not scored in the second. With 12 seconds left, there's a timeout on the court. North Carolina 70, Georgia Tech 65. 65, North Carolina by five with 12 seconds left in the ball game. Sam Perkins, we've talked a lot about Jordan. There's Price, what a ball game he has been. He's had an excellent ball game. Michael Jordan has been in his face all day. He hasn't forced many shots. Jordan with a big hand, and obviously Dean Smith playing their defense to control Mark Price, and he still had a fine afternoon. 26 points on official. Jordan hasn't been half bad either. He has 39. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, doing a great job on one end defensively and then turning around and having one of his, hit, or in fact, his biggest day offensively. Biggest day of his career. Perkins uh, with 21 points and nine rebounds. And he has a chance to increase his stats, and he does. The free throw line, 71-65. Mark Price, 26 points, five rebounds, eight of nine from the free throw line. And he had quite a few assists this afternoon, too. Perkins with that nice, soft, left-handed motion. Scores again, 72-65. 12 seconds left. Price under pressure, gets it to Thomas, back to Price, makes the three-pointer, and it gets it off, and it didn't go. Mansell with the rebound at the baseline, no good. The rebound to Braddock, Braddock looks at the clock, and that's it. North Carolina has won it, 72-65 to over Georgia Tech. 
But Jeff Mullins, I'll tell you one thing, they really had to earn it today. For Jeff 